So the next thing that we do now is we do with improper fractions that are also partial fractions. So if you remember in the previous examples that we looked at, the denominator, um, actually this one we could have done in a different way because the denominator could have been factorized into partial fractions, but they didn't want you to do that for this particular one. And in this previous example that we had here, the denominator was just a single linear factor. So now we're going to want to do something a little bit more with that. The board's decided to crash. Um, and we're going to try and do partial fractions as well as algebraic division. Great. OK, so what we're going to do is with this question, it, it may not feel obvious that you need to do algebraic division first, because this, in theory, looks really similar to the questions you've just been doing for homework for me, right? How will you then identify that some algebraic division is required before you can go in and do your partial fractions technique from the last lesson? Mm, kind of, but I think there's a quicker way without having to expand the bottom bracket that tells me this. Pardon? Yeah, it's 3x squared. Don't need to do any expanding at all. How do we know if something is improper? The degrees. So in this case, the degree of the numerator is 2, and the degree of the denominator is 2. It's not obviously 2, but it is obviously 2. You just expand it, and you know it would be a quadratic. So the first thing you need to do for this is you must check if the fraction is improper. If it is improper, then you need to do your algebraic division. If it's not improper, you just do partial fractions, OK? So the only difference here is you now need to be a bit of a, a sleuth. You need to look at the question that they're asking for you to do, and you need to decide whether it will require algebraic division first or whether you can just go straight in with partial fractions. In a partial fractions topic, if this were ever to come up by itself, this, isn't, this would be obvious because they would kind of tell you, like, oh, show it's in this form. But the most common thing you will use with partial fractions is within in integration. And they won't tell you, you need to use partial fractions here. So when we get to integration, if we ever have an improper fraction or a top-heavy fraction, I would be very impressed if someone will recognize that it's an improper fraction and say to me, we need to do algebraic division or and then partial fractions to this to be able to integrate it. OK, so that's why we do this. We have this for the future to be able to help us do some integration. So we're going to do the first technique for this. We're going to do two methods, and you can just decide which one works best for you here. So you can do algebraic division for this particular one that we've got here. Now, in this case, we will have to deal with the denominator in its expanded form, which would be x squared minus 3x plus 2. OK, and then you can do algebraic division to this. So I'm going to be dividing 3x squared minus 3x minus 2 by x squared minus 3x plus 2. So I just know there's going to be a 3, which is kind of obvious it was going to be a 3. So let's multiply all of that through by 3. That's 3x squared minus 9x plus 6. And then I'll do the subtraction. So that's minus 3 minus minus 9. That's minus 3 plus 9, which is 6x. And then we've got minus 2 plus 6. Oh, sorry, minus 2 minus, minus, uh, minus 6. It's minus 2 minus 6, which is minus 8. OK, don't know why I was making that into such a faff. So that's the remainder that we have, which is telling me that this thing is equal to 3 plus the remainder, which is 6x minus 8 over, I'm going to not write it in this form. I'm going to go back to the original form because I'm going to do partial fractions to it. x minus 1, x minus 2. So the only difference is we've got this extra quotient at the beginning, the extra thing that it's been divided by. In this case, it was just an integer. What other things could it be? Pardon? 
it could, I, I mean, it's, it could be an integer or a fraction or a decimal, or not a decimal, you know, it could be an integer or a fraction. What other thing could this quotient be for more generally in other questions? There could be a linear, it could be linear, it could be an x and a constant. If it was a cubic, you could have an, all the different parts of the, the beginning, but it doesn't have to just be a, a constant. It could be a, like ax plus b kind of thing as well. Just depends on comparing the, uh, the degrees of the numerator and the denominator. So we haven't quite finished. We now need to just put it into partial fractions. So I'm now just going to have a look at this second bit that I've got here. And I'm just going to do partial fractions to that bit. So I know that 6x minus 8 over x minus 1, x minus 2 can be expressed as an a over x minus 1 plus a b over x minus 2. So it's just going to be 6x minus 8 is a x minus 2 plus b x minus 1. You can do whatever technique you want to do. I probably would do a substitution. So if x is 2, We've got 12 minus 8, which is 4, equals b. And if x equals 1, we get minus 2 equals minus a. So a equals 2. Which means if we want to split this into partial fractions, we should write out the whole thing. It's just equal to 3 plus a over x minus 1. So that's 2 over x minus 1 plus b over x minus 2. That's 4 over x minus 2. So the red bit is what we did a couple of uh, is what we did in the last lesson, partial fractions. The blue bit was the extra thing that we've recapped on today's lesson, the algebraic division, and the black bit is just combining those two things together there. So there's nothing really new. It's just now being aware of when you need to do this. And the way that you check if you need to do this is you look at the degree of the numerator and the denominator. If they are the same, or if the numerator is bigger than the denominator, then you'll do algebraic division first. OK, so that's the first technique, which is algebraic division. The second technique is just using a single identity. This one's a little bit trickier, but if you're doing further maths, you'll definitely need to know how to do this one. So we have 3x squared minus 3x minus 2 over x minus 1, x minus 2. Now, this is a bit harder because you don't know exactly what you think it will look like. But because the top one has a degree 2 and the bottom one has degree 2. That means that the identity will just have a constant term then. It will just be an a. If I had another example where, I don't know, the top bit was 5, has a degree 5, and the bottom one has degree 2, what would the quotient actually look like when I did the division, do you think? <laughs> ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, then you would have the partial fraction bit coming afterwards. But in this case, just because the difference between them is 0, that's why we've got an a x to the 0. x to the 0 is obviously just 1. That's why you just have a constant term there. Then the other bits you would have of the partial fractions would be a b over x minus 1 and a c over x minus 2. So we've come up with what a general identity might look like. then we're just going to do the same technique as before of multiplying everything together. So this time we predicted, well, not really predicted, we knew it was going to be in this form here using that, our knowledge of, of uh, the coefficients, the degrees of the numerator and denominators, and we're now going to combine these together. So we get 3x squared minus 3x minus 2. Well, if I was going to add these three terms together, the a would need to be multiplied by the x minus 1, and the x minus 2. The b would just need to be multiplied by the x minus 2, and the c would just need to be multiplied by the x minus 1 if we were going to add those three things together. 
and you can't, you could just do substitution if you want to. Um, but I think I might just do a different technique. Remember, you can use substitution. I don't mind what you want to use, but I just feel like doing comparing coefficients, and then I might do some substitution as well. Can you think of a nice, easy coefficient I could compare that would help me find some? Pardon? The, what do you mean? The, either the x squared, the x, or the constant. I think the x squared is going to be a really easy one to compare because I don't have an x squared here or an x squared here, and I'm just going to have an one x squared from here. So if I compare the x squared coefficients, immediately I can tell that a is going to be equal to 3. And then, if I want to, I could do some more comparing of coefficients, but I think it then starts to get a bit trickier. So I'm going to use some of my other technique, which is going to be a substitution. And this time, for my substitution, I'm going to do the same as before. I'm going to just say, if x is equal to 1, so that would be 3 minus 3 minus 2. So that's just minus 2 equals, uh, what's that going to be? 1 minus 2 minus b. So in this case, b is 2. And if I do a substitution of x being equal to 2, well, that would be 3 times 4. That's 12 minus 6. Well, that's 6. Minus 2 is 4. So you get 4 is equal to, that one goes and that one goes, 4 is equal to c. So we've then got all three of the bits there. This time we didn't have to do any algebraic division. This is how I would have done it when I was your age, because I didn't like algebraic division. So all I can now say is that 3x squared minus 3x minus 2 over x minus 1, x minus 2 is equal to a, which is 3, plus 2 over x minus 1, plus 4 over x minus 2 from the bit that we had previously. And I just want to add in a bit of a side note as well. If I had an improper fraction that looked like this, I'm going to just change one of my powers for a second to illustrate my point a little bit better. If I had an improper fraction that looked like this, I'm not going to do the full question on this one, but I just wanted to point out something that is a little bit different. There's probably a couple of things you might be able to tell me that might be different about this question. Can anybody point out what they think might be different about this question? that I'm going to try and use to illustrate a different point. So the degree on the numerator is 4, and the degree on the denominator is 3, because there's a squared and then this bit here. So that's one of the points I'm going to try and illustrate, and I'm going to go with that straight away. So the identity for this would be, there would be an ax plus b. This has a degree 1, because 4 take away 3 is 1. That's one point I'm trying to illustrate, but there's something different about this one as well. Can anybody spot something that's different about this? It has a, I don't, say it again. Yeah, so th are you talking about this? Or are you talking about the top bit? So the top bit doesn't matter so much because that's just all part of the polynomial. Mm. So, not, so the difference in this case is that when I do the partial fractions, I would have, you might think it's going to be this. You might think it would just be C and D like this. But then it won't be. This one here is the one that we need to be careful of. What do you think the numerator should be when this is like this? More more than just cx. cx plus d. So the numerator needs to be the most general version of the thing that could be above it. Okay, Just in case you ever come across a question where one of the factors is not a linear factor. Technically, it's meant to just be linear factors. 
but I know in further maths they have it where they're not linear factors and you know what exam boards can be like. They can be like, oh, well, you know, they should know how to do this kind of thing. Just wanted to mention that if you have one of the two factors that are on the bottom is a quadratic, you would have to say that the top part of it would be a more general version of the linear factor. And you would just see why in practice, if you just did it with just one thing, it just wouldn't work. You would do it and you'd get something that just that didn't work out properly. So if you do come up with a question that has like a, one of the factors is like an x squared plus five or something and it can't be factorized, then you would just need to make sure when you use the identity. And then that wouldn't be a D, would it, anymore? It would change. And then that one would become an E like this. And in further maths, that's going to happen a lot. So I just wanted to kind of point that out to everyone in case it comes up in normal maths, but also to the people that are studying further maths. It's to make yourself aware of these things at this early stage as well. OK? So you have a choice on this next question to decide whether you want to do algebraic division or whether you want to do the other method. Um, I am going to not do algebraic division. I'm going to do the identity method. So if you want to see what I do for the identity method, and we can tell that they have the same degree on the top and bottom. So I think that's going to be an A plus B over X plus 2 plus C over 3X minus 1. So once you finish, you can check if you get the same answer as me. I think uh, the second method is perhaps a bit quicker. And then we're going to try the even questions from exercise 1G.